Hello guys, welcome back to the video tutorial series where we're going to do a stylized um, tileable tex uh, wood texture. In this one we're going to pull in our uh, base mesh that we created inside of Autodesk Maya into ZBrush and we're going to start the sculpting uh, of the um, the wooden beams, uh, planks rather. Um, for this we're going to use one special uh, custom tool and these are basically brushes from a, I believe he's a French environmental artist. His online name is Orb, and he has some very, very good custom brushes for that we're, going, that, that we're probably going to need for our process here. So you can find these here uh, using this link, um, or you can just push the link that I put in the uh, video description. And I'm also go I'm also going to show you how to import these into ZBrush uh, and start using them. So um, make sure that you get these, um, and make sure that you're also using a precious sensitive uh, precious sensitive um, tablet. Uh, like the Wacom tablets, for example, um, or else you will you will probably uh, run into trouble uh, creating these sorts of textures here. So make sure that you get these, and um, let's get started in ZBrush. Um, so we got, what are we going to start doing? We're going to come to Import, and then we're going to browse where we um, exported our OBJs before I put mine in graphical stuff, uh, wood t t texture tutorial, uh, OBJs, and I have it right here. So I'm just going to click open on that one. So you can see it is now over here in tools. Uh, and I can uh, hold my uh, left click in. And I can put the model in here. And I can go to edit mode and I can rotate it and see it in top view. Um, just like that. And we have the model imported into ZBrush now. And um, I'm just going to do a couple of different things here that makes that, that I really like. I don't really like the, the red color here on the material that I'm working on. So I'm going to come to Material, I'm going to go to Modifiers, and I'm going to desaturate these by pulling down Saturation A and Saturation B to minus 1. So that we now have, the, it's basically the same material, it's just white now. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Document, and I'm going to uh, come down here to the uh, Image Background, and I'm going to take this range down to uh, 0, so I don't have the color gradient in the background here. I, I, I like working with, with this better. Uh, it's really personal preference, but um, this is just what I like. Um, so, if you go to the Subtool tab, you can now see that we have the Subtool here. Uh, what we're going to do uh, in the beginning, we're going to select this one, and then we're going to go to Split, and we're going to go Split to Parts, and we're going to click Always OK to this one. So now, ZBrush has basically split our um, model up into the pieces that we had inside Maya. You can see the individual pieces here. Um, and this is good because we want the ability to sculpt each piece individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to come, we're now going to come down here, and if you s if you if I click on this uh, polyframe, you can see that this is basically the the entire mesh. Um, if I rotate this, you can see the wireframe, and you can probably also see if you have if you have some experience in sculpting, you can probably you probably know that we can't stuck we can't sculpt on this on this one. Uh, we need more. Um, uh, subdivisions. Uh, we need basically more polygons to be able to sculpt on this one. So we're, we're going, what we're going to do is we're going to keep this on and we're going to go to geometry and we're going to go into Dynamesh and then we're going to put in a resolution in here. Um, I think I will go with um, let's see probably 800 is good for this one. I'm gonna push enter and then I'm gonna click Dynamesh um, and you can see that ZBrush has now added a lot of uh, a lot of subdivisions to to this one. Uh, this is probably okay for now. But we can always, uh, if we need to, we can always go into a, a deeper subdivision uh, level. So this is probably good. And uh, Dynamesh is uh, th this this work process is really good because if you put in the same number here for all the different pieces, they basically also uh, they all get the same. Um, Density of polygons. So if we, for example, take this one now, the next, uh, the next uh, subtool, and we're going to come to geometry and put in 800 here again, and click Dynamesh. You can see that it basically has the same density of polygons as the one before had. So this is good. This is what we want. So we're going to um, do this for all of the sub pieces, uh, apart from the um, plane in the background, because we don't really need subdivisions on that one. So I'm just gonna click, uh, push, uh, put in 800, and click Dynamesh here. Uh, I'm gonna go by, uh, go to the next one in line. Um, 
put an 800 Dynamesh and you can basically also do this um, I'm probably just gonna pause the video here and uh, come back when I have all of these done okay guys I'm now back here and you can see that I have now subdivided all of my uh, sub tools apart from the plane the plane is still just uh, one big polygon really um, and you can see all of these pieces all have uh, subdivisions on them now and you could basically start sculpting these now uh, we're not really gonna do that I think we're gonna add just one subdivision level more um, but we're gonna what we're gonna do first is that we're gonna take all of these and we're gonna go to the merge uh, part here and we're just gonna merge all of these down I'm gonna click always OK I'm gonna keep hitting merge down until I get to the bottom plane I don't, I don't want the bottom plane to be part of this um, so we want basically want this we want the all the planks on one object and then we want the uh, plane on a, uh, as a different object but as you can see even though that these this is merged into one piece basically we all we still have the uh, different poly groups here which is good because we can now still uh, if I come to the the viewport here and hold down control and shift I can still access each, each individual piece here um, by using the polygroups so this is basically good so if you come out here where there's nothing and you hold control uh, shift again and push you get all the pieces back again um, so this is what we want we want uh, like I said before the ability to sculpt each individual piece um, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit control and D to go into a deeper subdivision level so now we have definitely enough polygons we have 3.5 million polygons now to work with and uh, this should be high enough density to actually get some really nice information um, so what we can do now is we can start uh, the sculpting process so I'm just, I'm just gonna start by picking one of the objects here uh, that we're gonna start sculpting I'm just gonna go with uh, this big one here I'm gonna First of all, I'm going to turn off the wireframe mode for this one. So I'm going to hit uh, hold control and shift and click on this piece here. So now we have this one selected. I'm going to frame it by uh, pressing F on the keyboard. So now we have the entire object uh, in, in the viewport. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit here um, on the corners because this is where I'm going to work now. Uh, let's see yeah right about here I'm gonna come to my trim dynamics brush uh, which I'm gonna access by hitting B then I'm gonna hit T and then I'm gonna hit D it's it's also down here you can also just uh, press this one I'm just gonna hit D it's faster for me I'm gonna sculpt in the freehand mode um, which you can select here you can also use dots and drag rectangle and stuff like that I'm just gonna use freehand um, then I'm gonna apply a square alpha for this one so I'm just gonna push this one and what this brush does if I'm just gonna scale I'm, I'm gonna scale down my brush by pushing uh, pushing and holding s and then just dragging down here you can also make it bigger you can make it bigger and smaller by dragging this one I'm gonna go to something like 19 or 20 or something like that and what this brush does is it enables me to cut off corners like this and really make some nice information here that we can use um, and get a lot of good detail from in the bakes um, so I'm just gonna start by making some really rough strokes here um, this is probably wood that has been chipped away at um, for a long time so or maybe they have it's been handled um, roughly and um, planed planed very roughly maybe maybe the uh, the planks have been used before uh, on different pieces so these are reused uh, planks so maybe they've taken some damage over time so I'm just gonna chip away at corners and chip away at at some of the um, some of the uh, lines here so I'm also just gonna make sure that I get the corners in here um, so something like this um, there we go I thought it looked weird <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep doing this. I basically basically chip away at all of the corners here. You can also mm, pick sections where it's not uh, that harsh, and maybe something like this. But then you can maybe make a big dent in there, like this one, and just keep on going. Really, uh, we need all of these corners here to be chipped away at, and to some degree at least, to make to make all of the planks look kind of interesting. 
Um, and I'm using also, of course, the pressure sensitive uh, pressure sensitivity of uh, of the tablet that I'm using. Um, so we should end up with uh, just something like this. Um, this is obviously not done yet, but this is the the base uh, shape of this plank here. So if I go back to the other ones, you can see that it doesn't look quite like the other ones. It does have these chipped edges, uh, which is kind of what we want. So I'm just gonna pick the next one here. We are of course going to do uh, some extra work on these. Um, and I'm of course also going to show you how I do, how I do this. So let's just um, start by uh, making all of the base sculpts here. So I'm just gonna do some really rough sculpts in this one. The corners and let's see. We can always go in and smooth some of this if it gets too um, too harsh and too uh, if if you if you feel like it looks a bit too much like um, uh, let's say um, tiles of some sort like stone tiles, you can uh, you can probably smooth it out a bit and and see what what you can do with it. But I really like these uh, this look of uh, these planks being really beaten up and 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 scraped away at during the years and having lost most of its basic shape. Um, because of its usage and people have been stepping on it and uh, let's just see here this looks kind of weird let's just put this corner away and yeah it's probably okay so something like this you can see that it also works in collaboration with the with the um, wood uh, planks that are next to them so if you for example if I when I get back to the the overall view you can see this um, so basically you're going to do this for all of the planks and I'm probably gonna pause the video again here like I did before and just come back when I've done it to to all of them um, and then I can show you how to take the next steps in making these look like wood um, because at this point you could argue that they don't really look like wood at this point and that's totally fine uh, we're going to do several uh, other things to make it to make it more obvious that it is wood um, so something like this, and you can do this for all of them, and I'm just going to pause the video here and uh, come back to you when I've done all of them.